named after an Aztec god and often referred to as the largest animal to ever fly, Quetzalcoatlus northropi is one of the most iconic large pterosaurs, second only to Pteranodon. Despite its fame, for many years, little was actually known about this giant. Discovered in Texas in the early 70s, the initial Quetzalcoatlus fossils consisted of a few massive wing bones and partial skeletons of smaller individuals, thought at the time to be juveniles. Although the species received its formal name in 1975, the fragmentary nature of the find and the lack of a detailed description left it poorly understood. To make matters worse, the museum holding the fossils was notoriously secretive, limiting access to researchers and often requiring strict confidentiality agreements from those who could study the material. Unlike most other pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus was found in an inland environment, leading to early interpretations of it as a giant scavenger, similar to a vulture. However, without detailed anatomical information, these early depictions were highly speculative, often showing it with a snake-like neck, tiny head, sharp teeth, and a small crest. By the mid-80s, Quetzalcoatlus was classified within the Asdarkid family, a group of pterosaurs known for their long necks, toothless beaks, and long legs. However, as Darkids themselves were not well understood until the mid to late 90s, when more complete specimens were found. Reconstructions during this time became more refined, showing a sleek and bird-like creature with long wings, an S-shaped neck, and sometimes a covering of pycnophobrous and fuzz-like structures similar to fur. Some depictions still showed Quetzalcoatlus with a chunky, blunt beak, based on fossilized jaws found in Texas. However, by 1996, it was determined that these jaws actually belonged to a different pterosaur. Around the same time, new fossils of what were once thought to be juvenile Quetzalcoatlus hinted at a second species, later named Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni, roughly half the size of Q. Northropi. These fossils showed evidence of a bony crest on the skull. During this era, Quetzalcoatlus was also thought to be a skim feeder, flying low over water and using its lower jaw to catch fish. The skim feeding theory held until 2007, when a study showed that no pterosaurs, including Quetzalcoatlus, could have fed in that way. As a result, as darkids were reinterpreted as primarily terrestrial predators, spending much of their time on the ground, walking on all fours and using their large beaks to capture prey, like a stork, but with the long neck of a giraffe. A full description of Quetzalcoatlus had been promised since the 1980s, but it wasn't until 2021 that a series of papers was finally published. This long-awaited research revealed more about the species, confirming Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni as a distinct species and turning Quetzalcoatlus from a poorly understood fossil into one of the most complete as darkids known. Despite some debate over the reconstructions of its posture and flight mechanics, the release of the fossils for further study ensures that more insights will emerge in the future. Although Quetzalcoatlus northropi is still only known from fragments, the new information from its smaller relative gives us a clearer picture of its life. Living 68, 66 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous, it roamed what is now Texas, though it likely had a much wider range. As darkids are believed to have been capable of flying long distances, possibly thousands of kilometers using thermal currents. While Quetzalcoatlus was one of the largest known flying animals, it may not have been the largest as previously believed. Early estimates of its wingspan reached as much as 21 meters, but more recent estimates suggest it was closer to 10 meters, with some other as darkids potentially having wingspans that were slightly larger. Nevertheless, Quetzalcoatlus was enormous. On the ground, standing on all fours, it likely resembled a modern giraffe in size, standing about 6 meters tall, with much of its height coming from its neck. Its limb proportions were more like those of land mammals than other pterosaurs, suggesting it was highly adapted for terrestrial movement. However, it could still launch into flight by using its strong forelimbs to catapult itself into the air. As a ground-dwelling predator, Quetzalcoatlus likely hunted smaller animals, which it would have grabbed with its long, pointed beak. 
In the semi-arid, fern prairie habitat of Texas, young titanosaurs like Alamosaurus may have been a significant part of its diet.